Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here and got a pretty exciting package in the mail today from Samsung. They sent over the new Galaxy Z Fold 3 5G and the new Flip 3 5G. The Flip I will be unboxing tomorrow. However, tonight we're going to be unboxing the new Fold 3 5G. Starting at $1,800, Samsung continues to improve upon the previous models with this being the third generation. They're adding more durability. They're improving the screen durability and even, even adding S Pen support. Now I will be putting my SIM card in this foldable phone doing update videos, so be sure to subscribe so you're notified when those go live and of course, future unboxing videos as well. Anyways, let's dive right into it. Unboxing the Galaxy Z Fold 3 from Samsung. Show you real quick what comes in the box because it is a fairly small box. And then of course, get some hands on with their latest flagship foldable. Let's get started. Let's get started. First of all, Samsung is definitely sticking with their minimal packaging initiative. Seems like these boxes are just getting smaller and smaller. Now taking the top off the box, right away we do get the phone and look at that, it's opened up for us, ready to go. First of all, where is that front facing camera? Where is that punch hole design? Oh wait, there isn't one. There's actually an under display front camera on this screen when it is open, which is really cool. We'll check that out in just a second. If you can't tell, this is actually the phone I've been looking forward to the most. We're gonna set it to the side, see what else we get. Like I said, very minimal SIM ejection tool, getting started guide, and one USB Type-C to Type-C cable for transferring or charging your phone. That is it in the box. So on to what you came to see, the Z Fold 3. This is the phantom black color. Now there is some plastic on it. Let's go ahead and start to peel that off. Always very satisfying. And this is the front display, which does have that punch hole front facing camera. Just the inside display has the under display, which you can actually see with the screen being off. Uh, we'll show it what it looks like when it is on. Now let's close this for the first time. And as expected, Hinge feels very premium when you close it, open it. It's just very smooth, has the perfect amount of give, in my opinion, enough where it will stay uh, still in the specific spots. So you can put it in what they call flex mode if you wanna use one app up towards the top. So it is great. They do such a good job with the Hinge. Now I'm gonna boot this up for the first time on the power button on the right side with that fingerprint scanner built in. And while it boots up, let's take a closer look. So down at the bottom, a microphone, our USB-C slot, and one of the speakers. Just a quick closer look at that hinge opening up so you can kind of see what the mechanism looks like and then just closing it. Now moving along on the right side where the opening is, this is that power button with fingerprint scanner I was talking about, volume rockers, SIM card slot, now, continuing through, I wanna make note of the camera bump. It's actually fairly minimal overall. Up towards the top is another one of those stereo speakers and another microphone. Now, the hinge, for a close-up of the hinge, does say Samsung on the side for some minimal branding down at the back. Just really nothing, that triple camera system that you have. All three are 12 megapixels and you have your wide angle lens, ultra wide angle lens, and telephoto lens. So the three that I look for in a camera. And one more close up of opening the phone and just a look at that hinge while it does close as well. Just to give you a closer look at that mechanism. Very uh, closed off, not much of a gap between the two sides. Anyways, I'm going to run through the startup process and talk about anything that pops out or is noteworthy. So diving right into things I'm noticing right off the bat, first of all, on that front display, there's actually a screen protector pre-installed. So nice that Samsung has that pre-installed. And also, one thing with white backdrops on the display, there is a somewhat closer look at that under display camera. It's a little bit more noticeable with a white backdrop. It looks a little strange on camera, honestly, but in person you can notice it, but I believe it's just about only when you have a white backdrop to it. So you have the standard pattern pin, you can choose face unlock and fingerprint scanner. This is open the phone to add our fingerprint scanner. And this is actually in a really good spot 
in my opinion. An in-display fingerprint scanner, unless you put it both on the inside and the outside, really doesn't make sense for a phone like this because the way you hold it just about at all times, your thumb is going to be near the power button on the side. And if you have an in-display fingerprint scanner, again, you'd have to have one on the front screen and one on the inside screen. Maybe that'll come in the future, maybe not. Seems like a little excess, but here we go, fingerprint added. added. We can add another one if you'd like to. I'm going to continue through. So very important, taking care of your phone gives you some things to be precautionary about. Make sure not to use an old stylus from maybe the Note series. If you do, it will actually warn you not to use that. Make sure you don't put it near keys. It isn't dust resistant, so exposure to small particles. However, it is water resistant now at IPX8 rating, which is really cool that they have figured out how to add water resistance to a folding phone. It says to not remove the protective film on this main screen, and also it contains magnets, so keep it away from credit cards, etc. Okay, we are all set up and ready to go. Let's hit finish, and here it is. So let's close that 7.6 inch display and check out that 6.2 inch front display. Unlocking it with our finger was very quick and easy. Actually, now if I just set my thumb down on that scanner, it isn't opening. However, there is a setting where you can have it actually unlock. If you just set your thumb down, you don't have to press the button. Anyways, with this front display, they have added, and I can tell it's already enabled out of the box just by swiping through some screens, 120 hertz within settings and display, scrolling down. Oh wait, there it is, motion smoothness is on adaptive. So it scrolls all the way up to 120 hertz and I can tell that it is enabled because it is so smooth, it's definitely worth it. And you do also have 120 hertz on this inside display. So again, this will look equally as smooth. So a quick close-up of that inside display, it is AMOLED. One thing I wanna make note of is, at least on a black screen, it still kind of looks like a punch hole cutout, to be completely honest. It doesn't look like the black covers that front-facing camera overall. However, while looking at something with color, it doesn't look nearly as prominent. So white or black screens, you can kind of notice it a little bit more. But once color rolls around, you really can't see it as much. I really don't feel like the camera's picking it up, how it looks to the naked eye. But once you have color going on, it really does hide and looks more like an under display camera. The one thing I know that they've been working on quite a bit is integrating their apps to work better side by side while you're using them. For example, let's jump into settings and look, you don't even have to leave the screen. You can go through all of your different settings and it pops up with the different options, so you don't have to go through menus and hit back at all. It just shows up on the right side, scroll through, let's say, hey, lock screen, what if I want to change the pin or pattern? You can go right into it. There's also a lot of advanced features, such as linking to Windows, Samsung Dex, which I love. You can have on a monitor, on a PC. You also have motions and gestures, such as lifting to wake, all the fairly standard ones that you see across Samsung devices, but going through advanced features, you'll see they add quite a bit of things you can add to the phone. Also, of course, you generally have your options such as if I wanna open up YouTube and Samsung internet, there we go. They open up twice at the same time. Now we have side-by-side -side apps going. You can also add a third app to these screens. Obviously, you can use this large display vertically or horizontally however you'd like. And then when you do close while you have multiple apps open, it will kind of close out of those apps and you can go back into recent apps and use that multi-window feature. However, of course, if you have a couple apps open and you open the phone, it will continue where you left off, which I love because I'm always checking something real quick on the front facing camera. Let's say I wanna go into the Galaxy Store, check out one of the apps and then see something I wanna check out more of I can open up that entire phone. So overall, that is everything I wanted to show off for now with the unboxing video of the Galaxy Z Fold 3 from Samsung. Like I said, more videos coming. A check-in video after using it for a little bit is coming as well, so be sure to subscribe. Drop a comment. Please let me know if there's something you'd like to see in those upcoming videos, and I can cover it overall. As always, guys, 
Thank you very much for watching.